Welcome to Kevin Makes Cool Things, I'm Kevin, and these are my Kamish daggers from the solo leveling manhwa. These are the last daggers that Jinwoo gets during the series, and they're the final installment of the solo leveling dagger challenge I set for myself. So this project had a lot more twists and turns than normal. Back in October 2021, I decided to learn Blender and challenge myself to make every solo leveling dagger. This series of projects was supposed to finish around the same time as the manhwa, but my math was way off because they didn't end up doing the side stories. For most of my projects, I'll start working on them a couple of months before posting them. I'll often do these in batches, working on a few things in parallel to minimize cleanup between steps. For instance, let's use Rasaka's Fang and Night Killer as an example. These were the first two daggers I did in the series, and I posted them in November and December respectively. I designed both daggers together in early October, and then did the printing, sanding, and priming at pretty much the same time. There was always a bit of a last minute scramble to finish up some painting and detailing, plus putting these videos together, but I always had at least a couple of things in the pipeline. That didn't happen this time around. For the Kamish daggers, I needed to make two separate daggers. The Demon King's daggers are technically a set of two, but since they're identical, I only made a single one. The Kamish daggers are clearly different, so this was basically two months worth of work in a single video. That alone was enough to cause me problems. Worse, my 3D printer started having issues a couple of months ago. I finished doing the Kamish dagger models in February, and I had a number of other things modeled as well, which you'll probably see in the coming months, but I couldn't print any of it. My stockpile of projects ran out pretty quickly. I posted an older Overlord project last month to buy me a bit of time, but it almost wasn't enough. My 3D printer is something I made from a kit several years ago. My wire management was not great, and parts of this are only functional because of rubber bands and paper clips. I'm working on upgrading this as well as building a new 3D printer, which will probably become videos in the upcoming months. To fix this, I swapped out the hot end and the nozzle, plus added a new glass bed. Finally, it was working again, and I could get back to printing. I ended up making these models twice for a couple of reasons. Luckily, the reference image was really good. This image is from chapter 152, and it is great. It's actually one of the best I've ever worked with, but that doesn't mean that the weapon dimensions are realistic. The handles are way too small compared to the blade. This is one of the pieces from version 1. It failed due to the printer being broken, but it clued me into the handle size issue. It's laughably small, so I ended up making a second version and correcting for this. Before going on, I want to talk a little bit about how I'm labeling these. I'm calling this one the Fat Dagger and this one the Thin Dagger just to keep them straight while I'm making them. That's also how I labeled the files on Thingiverse. For version 2, instead of working directly off the reference image, like I did for version 1, I opened this up in GIMP and traced over everything. This let me easily change the handle dimensions. In Blender, I made this using the same approach I use for all my other daggers. I start by making a plane and tracing over the major details. Then I will extrude that plane by at least one millimeter before extruding it again to the proper width. I'll eventually be mirroring this piece, so that one millimeter extrusion means there will eventually be a two millimeter flat edge to this, which is way easier to print and finish than a sharp edge. To create the slant of the blade, I adjust the topmost set of points to create these angles. Then I crease some of the edges and apply a subdivision surface modifier. This causes the blade to curve nicely and is way better than anything I could do by hand. In version 2, I also ditched a lot of the details on the thin dagger. On the first version, I tried to copy over absolutely everything, but realized it didn't look great. I decided I'd rather have this look good, but lack a couple of details. I had planned to paint these details red to match the reference image but decided not to do it later on. I just didn't think it would look good, at least not with my painting skills. Remaking these models took about 8 hours for both daggers, which is way faster than my first attempt. I repaired these models in Repetier Host because my models are almost always non-manifold. I divided these up by intersecting the daggers with various cubes. This perfectly broke the daggers down into printable pieces. I did adjust the height of the various pieces so that the edges didn't interrupt any of the key features. I also added some holes between these pieces, so I could include bits of nail during gluing. 
These help center the pieces and add some strength to the join. This covers the background for the project and how we made these designs. If my process is similar to yours or radically different, then let me know in the comments. I'm totally self-taught, so I'm always curious about how other people approach this stuff. I printed this, assembled everything, and attached it together with two-part epoxy. I somehow missed adding the holes to the tip of the fat dagger, which made gluing a little more exciting than I planned, but you won't have to deal with that because I fixed the files before uploading them to Thingiverse. Afterwards, I did a round of sanding with my Dremel tool, applied some wood filler, and then did some hand sanding. I didn't need to do as much sanding as usual because these prints were great quality, at least in terms of my printer. While I was fixing it, I discovered that printing only one piece at a time drastically reduced layer lines, although it did take much more babysitting. The handles and some of the other details ended up being a little bit rough. I couldn't effectively sand some of this, but it looks alright. I primed this with some spray-on sandable primer. I sprayed half the blade, let it dry, and then sprayed the other half. I used some thread to hang this up to dry, which is an approach I really like. I used some sandpaper and a chisel to shave off some imperfections. The primer really makes these areas pop, so I always end up finding more issues once the priming is done. I could have gone through a few more rounds of sanding and priming, but I was running out of time for this project and decided to keep going. I started painting the fat dagger, but then I realized that I need to add a little more wood filler. The gaps between these pieces were a little larger than I realized, and I couldn't ignore it. My approach for painting is to start with the lightest colors, which in this case meant the yellow on the fat dagger. I didn't use the airbrush for this because I didn't have enough time. I wasn't concerned with painting inside the lines because I knew I'd be covering this up with darker colors. I repeated this process for the red of the blade. When adding the darker colors, I always start by outlining the edges with my smallest brush, then painting in the rest. It took several coats, especially with the red. I sprayed these both with a matte sealer. Like with the primer, I sprayed one half the blade, hung it to dry, and then sprayed the other half. That finished this project and closed out my entire solo leveling dagger challenge. I'm super happy with these daggers and the series as a whole. I had no idea how to use Blender when I started, and by the end, I could design one of these daggers in about four hours. There's definitely still room for improvement, but I'm really satisfied with my progress. I'll put a link to Thingiverse in the description in case you want to print your own. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I love 3D printing, and I'm trying to grow this channel so I can share it with more people. If you enjoy my work and want to help, then please like and subscribe. If you want to see more of my work, there should be a link to my solo leveling playlist on screen now. From there, you can see my other daggers, my dungeon key, or my runestone builds.